Okay, hey everybody and welcome to another episode of On The Restroom Off The Cuff. Today, we'll be doing a follow-up review of my uh, basically ultimate SKX007 done by Alex at Artifice Horror Works. Now, from the first video, there was a, you know, there was a little bit of controversy um, there. Kind of a lot of complaints about the chaptering, which has now been realigned. There was also a lot of people asking more and more about where the parts came from, how to source the parts and whatnot. So I'll definitely touch on that in this video. So if you've seen the other one, and those those are some of the things that bothered you. Also, um, we added a new bracelet. So a lot of people also asked, hey, did you have a bra was there a bracelet that went with that? You know, um, so covering that in this uh, video so definitely stay tuned if that's what you're interested in or you know those were some of your problems with the last one so the chapter ring as you can see has been realigned it looks great the great news about having a watch that's been modified locally is that you know you don't have to send it to switzerland or to a special shop in japan to get it worked on or some type of special authorized dealer with a big huge weight i you know this went back to a guy who lives about 20 minutes away from me so not a huge deal but it did cause quite a stir in the youtube comments on the last video um so that's definitely something that's uh, addressed here. I'm going to kind of cut it short. I'm going to try to skip over some of the, you know, history and, and the specs and all that because that's already been covered. I'm going to just mostly try to touch on um, kind of some of the things that weren't covered before and kind of expand upon them. So if you haven't seen uh, the previous video and this is your first time watching it, this is a modified SKX007. Now this is done by Artifice Horrorworks. It is um, basically at a particular spec that's considered his SKX enhanced. Um, everything basically was picked out by me and customized by Alex to fit together to be one cohesive design. So um, basically I chose all the parts and he made it all happen, sourced everything, and then voila, this is what you have here. So. We'll talk a little bit about everything that's kind of encompassed here and what we're looking at. So, as you can see, the um, the bezel is different. It's a 60 click bezel. It's from Yaboki's. It is his baby tuna style bezel. Now, is there a link to Yaboki's I can provide? No. Um, he has a photo bucket album where you look at the stuff and then you email him. So. The best way I could say for you to purchase something from Yabokis or Herald is to Google search how to purchase from Yabokis. That's about the best I can do. Anything else is really um, going to take a whole video in itself. And I don't speak for Harold, so you would need to email him for any type of pricing, any type of quoting, anything like that. So let's just get that out of the way. So that's where this bezel came from. Now it is actually a modified unit. This was made um, for the Baby Tuna Seiko watches. And basically Alex Artifice modifies it to fit perfectly onto here, onto this SKX. So um, that is how that's done. Although uh, Harold does now offer a version of this that is made for the SKX, but you know, I've never tried it, so I can't vouch for it, but I can vouch for this from Alex. Now the bezel is from DLW. It's a ceramic bezel. It is meant to mimic the SKX uh, factory insert, which is flat, which is really nice. So it, it definitely keeps that um, aesthetic from the original and you know as far as all the indices and the markers and everything it just looks really really great so that's where that's from now this crown is a screw down crown it's from the monster and it's just been branded with um, the prospects X to tie in to the dial which is from the Mohawk which is the SRP 585 so that is where this dial is from that's also where the second hand is from now the hands Although you might think that's just a stock SKX affair, these are actually the hands from the Turtle reissue, the SRP777. So this has the newer formula of Seiko's Lumabrite, which I feel goes really well with the dial. With um, Also has the updated loom, of course, with the applied indices. It's applied a lot thicker and a lot nicer than the old SKX, um, the factory one. So that was definitely um, what I had in mind there. Now, the... 
lugs are drilled and as you can see this is a brand new bracelet from strap code it is the hexed oyster bracelet that they make and it is actually made specifically for this case and as you can see they didn't just take the oyster bracelet end link um, and fit it to there they actually put some nice chamfers on there to match the same aesthetic that you have um, on the links there which i think is fantastic and i think it really ties in great to this bezel and to this grip on this um, on the uh, crown there which is really nice now on the back uh, you'll see that it is an engraved a custom engraved case back from Alex artifice and then it also ties into this awesome signed clasp this whole unit is from strap code and we basically just had it um, laser engraved to kind of match the theme you know so as you can see when you really look at the watch you understand that it's very special and it's very customized but from the top it definitely has that you know it has that OEM plus appeal it you know it looks like it could be something that came straight from the factory but just a little bit nicer than you might expect so that's kind of um, you know if you haven't seen one of these clasps before basically they have a ratcheting mechanism that you can use for micro adjustments or you can also use for a divers instead extension and then you also have really nice perlage here on the folding mechanism which is great so no stamp steel there so it basically now this skx 007 essentially has all the quote-unquote bells and whistles you know sapphire ceramic um hacking hand windable movement um the movement is the seiko instruments nh36a which essentially is an unbranded 4r36 so basically um, it, it's just an aftermarket option that Seiko sells to many other brands, mostly micro brands buy the NH movements, stick them inside their watches, and then they get to say, hey, we have a Seiko movement, Seiko reliability, Seiko serviceability, and Seiko affordability built in. Now, the cool thing about this is uh, it's a modified watch, but it still keeps that in-house, you know, quote unquote vibe because you're putting a Seiko movement inside of a Seiko case, which is really, really nice. Now, this might not be for everyone. It is quite a commitment and an undertaking to take on to have something like this built or to do it yourself. Now, if you really are loving this aesthetic, but you don't want to spend the money and you don't want to wait the, the lead time, there are other options that are out there for you. Now, one of those options comes from Armida. It is the A1 42 millimeter and it also has an NH movement. That's the NH35 because it's just the date. Um, but it's also from Seiko, except now the case is from Armida and it adds an extra 100 meters water resistant. But it, it really has a very similar appeal. And I've even put it on a hexed oyster bracelet from Strap Coat as well with the great ratcheting clasp. Now from Armida, you can get one. Um, with a very similar looking bracelet and, and similar functioning clasp, but it's just non-tapering. I prefer the taper, so I put this on aftermarket. But, you know, basically for no wait time, um, you know, you just have to wait for the time it ships, you can have something for a lot less. So something to think about if that's what you're interested in, you really like the look, you know, you, you, you would like to have a modern SKX, but maybe you're not ready for the commitment. Here you go. So that's an, that's really a great option. Now, if you're new to the channel and you haven't seen um, my 009 mod and you're thinking, oh man, I really love the Pepsi uh, version of the SKX. Wow, what would a, a modern version of that look like? So here you go. This is the modern, uh, basically my modern interpretation of an SKX 009 also done by Alex at Har Artifice Horror Works. Now there are, uh, you know, as, as you can see, they look like very different watches, although they basically started out as the same base watch. Now, here we've also done the strap code Super Oyster, and then, um, you know, we have the Marine Master Ratcheting Clasp, which is really, really nice. So, really keeping in within that OEM Plus um, mindset and kind of aesthetic. And then we have an updated case back 
it's still the original case back, but it just has the updated specs in there. So it tells you, hey, this has an, uh, you know, has a sapphire crystal, double dome, AR, you know, and then uh, it has an updated movement, uh, the NH36, and then, uh, which is really, really great. So now the specs match what's, what's actually in the watch. And then we have, you know, coin edge bezel, um, this great uh, Stargate dial there, which it's been covered tons of times in other videos and really across everywhere. Um, so I'm not gonna go too much into the details on this watch, just um, for kind of the newbies that are, you know, casually checking out the channel, looking at this. Um, this is kind of my take, but it's more if maybe, you know, there was a Sarb, you know, SKX, which actually there was technically. So maybe it was like if the Presage line uh, decided to, do a dive watch you know maybe it would look like this and then of course prospects it probably look like this so those that's kind of my take on on that so now if you if you really like the idea of kind of a premium you know version of a Japanese kind of really great everyday watch um, but you're not really ready to make that um, financial or time commitment now you there's another option for for everybody that is a lot more affordable it is from Orient which is a sister company to um, Seiko there it's not a sub brand of Seiko they just are owned by the same parent company which is Epson which sometimes is referred to as Seiko Epson but it's not like Seiko watch owns Orient watch um, Seiko watch and Orient watch are both owned by the same parent company, but um, Essentially Orient is just um, a you know a little bit less known um, unless you're into watches then you definitely probably know about Orient because they provide extremely great values and so although this watch is modified, this can be easily modified for me, you know, I'd say by anybody. Um, you don't need any special tools or anything like that. Um, this just has an aftermarket bezel from Yabokis, and then it has an ap the same aftermarket insert because this bezel is meant to fit SKX inserts. So that pretty much makes um, your options limitless from that standpoint. Um, and then, you know, what is the, the watch already comes with a, an updated hacking hand windable movement. It already has drilled lugs, already has solid end links, already has a signed crown. So, oh, also has a sapphire crystal and that's all from the factory. So there's really a lot less modifications that need to be done, um, you know, which I think is great. I did a whole video dedicated to this watch. So make sure you look at that if you really want more of the details on there. But basically, you know, you can put together a watch on your own with just a couple parts nothing special and you know kind of they took in all the hard work out of it for you um, but you can still customize it right versus this you're kind of buying it out of the box um, the Armida A1 and here you, you can still kind of have a customized uh, Japanese watch that's just really fantastic um, and then you know ratchet and clasp from the pro saturation diver really nice tapering bracelet from the, or the JDM Orient Kingmaster, really, really solid, great, and really nice that it fits right in between those end links there. So, really nice option. Uh, let's do this. Uh, let's go ahead and get to the loom here, have a little loom fest, of course. Now, the loom on the Armida is, is definitely gonna be the brightest. It is C3, and it's applied very, very thick. And that's just kind of um, honestly a, a, a very common characteristic for micro brand divers. That is what they do. They go deeper and they glow brighter. That is their whole selling point and they do it for a lot less money. Now, I went through a lot of different phases. There was times when I was really into micro brands and I just really, um, I started out being pretty big into to Swiss watches and, and then I moved kind of into Japanese and back and forth and every which way. Um, but, you know, I think there's definitely a lot of value that, let me just charge these up here, that micro brands can offer and a lot of value uh, that uh, mainstream Japanese brands can offer. So, you know, with that said, let's go ahead and get a fun little loom shot for you guys. And let me hit the lights. All right, so as you can see, um, you know, 
all of them have very, very nice loom, very comparable, of course, across the board with uh, Seiko. I mean, these are all OEM dials and uh, and everything like that. And then, you know, um, the loom pips on the bezel is, is really where, you know, the homework had to be done to get it to where that loom pip is going to shine just as bright and really suit um, the loom that is going on, uh, you know, so it looks good not only in the daylight, but also in the evening and in darkness. Um, of course, the Armida has a big advantage um, in the loom department because it has a fully loomed bezel. Um, but, you know, if that's your thing, then maybe you shouldn't necessarily invest the time and the money into a 007 mod. You can just go ahead and get the Armida as is. And, and you know, if you really want um, a tapering bracelet, you can you can spend a little extra money on that. Still have something that's, you know, semi-custom. Um, and uh, really, uh, really don't do anything special because everybody can change out a watch strap or bracelet, right? So that's definitely an option. Now, um, if you want to get a little bit uh, more custom, then you can buy something like, you know, like the... Orient Mako USA 2 where it already has so many great bells and whistles um, and then you just do things so you can enable it to have that great ceramic bezel, ratcheting clasp, you know, um, tapering bracelet. You can do those little mods essentially and then now you're, now you're left with something that really has it all, right? And it's also custom and, and you know, quote unquote, one of a kind, which is great and it's still built by you. Now, if you have always loved the SKX or, you know, maybe you've just always been borderline about it. You really weren't sure, you know, what the big fuss about was about. You got into watches later on and, you know, you just really weren't into old school watches that don't hack and hand wind. It just seems a little cheap, especially now when you can get watches that do all that and more um, in that really entry level price range. Now, if that's the case, you know, then I'd say maybe this could be the, the, the thing for you. Maybe modifying an SKX, a, a new one, or, you know, modifying your old favorite, you know, and kind of bringing it back to life, modernizing it, bringing some life back into it and kind of evolving it a bit. Now, there's a lot of different um, mods that are out there, which pretty much make an SKX look like something totally different and, you know, um, for me, I really uh, enjoy this kind of um, OEM Plus look where it looks like a Seiko still and it feels like a Seiko. Um, it just feels like a nicer one. So that's kind of my style and my aesthetic for these particular builds. But, you know, it's not to knock, you know, any of the ones where people are doing, you know, the 50 Fathoms mods or anything like that. Or, you know, where they're putting snowflake cans from a Tudor in there. That's all still really cool too. But for me, this is kind of... Um, uh, my bread and butter. I think this looks really great. So these are some really cool options for you. You know, maybe we can zoom in a little bit and just get a nice look. And, um, you know, final thoughts, of course, the SKX oozes X factor on its own, but now you can kind of have the specs to back up that X factor. So for those intangibles, now you can add some of those tangible, valuable things in a watch, like having a hacking and hand windable movement or having a bezel that feels very solid and good in your hands or a crown. Um, so, or a bracelet that feels really great. Um, so really, by modifying these, you can really have everything you want and have kind of and more. So really great, but you definitely get what you pay for. So either you can take the time and learn the skills or you can pay somebody else to do it. Either way, it's an investment in either time or money. And, you know, I, I can kind of advise you in either, you know, um, but I definitely recommend Alex Artifice Horrorworks. Go ahead and check out links to his Instagram and there's and his Facebook um, site page in the comments below. I'll also post links to my Instagram if you guys aren't already following. Definitely make sure you check it out. If you like the video, please hit like. If you haven't already, please do subscribe because we definitely have more content just like this coming your way. Thanks, guys. Bye.